So this session is three talks, 20 minutes each, followed by 20 minutes of a Q&A session. So we're going to have you hold your questions uh, till the end of all three talks. And um, it will be largely through the polling uh, advice. So please work on getting that app installed and making sure you can ask those questions. If that fails, we do have microphones, so you will be able to ask questions that way. Um, our first speaker is Mohammed Taleb from Banner Health in Arizona, speaking to us on pre-hospital severity scales and bypass algorithms for mechanical thrombectomy. Welcome. All righty. Thank you guys for coming this early. Um, we'll uh, try to make this worth it. All right. And so I'm going to talk about uh, severity scales. Um, I see some of you guys in the audience, you guys may have heard some of this before, but what I'm going to do is, first of all, dis disclosures. Um, none of my uh, consulting has anything to do with this talk. Um, so the question is which scale? And I think this is important because what is your goal? Is your goal to catch as many LVOs as possible and this hashtag leave no LVO behind? Or is it don't abuse the system and use the most spe specific tool even if you miss 50% of LVOs because their NHO scale is less than 10. And really, that's what you have to answer is like, what is your goal, okay? Because if you don't, then you're not gonna know which, which scale to use because no scale like, like does it all. That's, that's really the, the summary. There is no better. There is what fits my community needs. And so I will go over all this. So let's review current tools. And so current tools, how I look at it is there's two types. You have the quantitative, which is basically what um, the American Heart Association endorsed, just because they were the first, not because of anything else, and their severity. So it's race, FAST, ED, Cincinnati Pre-Hospital Stroke Severity Scale, LA Motor Scale, there's NIH 12 Scale 8. What it is, it's their quantitative. 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, add up numbers, it's above 5, yes, transfer because it's severe, versus quantitative. And so the quantitative, the, the first was really VAN, which is, which is a tool that, that I invented. Just, but there's lots of others. There's Fast VAN, which is the same as Snow. There's Elvo from Japan. There's Act Fast. Uh, from, from Australia, and ACFAST is very similar, but instead of just having any arm weakness, you have to have severe arm weakness. And then they look for vision gaze, basically gaze, aphasia, or neglect, right? And so you basically have quantitative versus qualitative, right? Do you add up numbers, or is it just a yes, no, or an, or an algorithm? And that's really uh, it. And so, and then there's even more, like if that's not enough. Some said, well, you know, I kind of like the qualitative, but let's just say, well, they have three cortical symptoms, right? So, uh, you know, so save is like that. You have to have arm weakness plus gaze uh, plus aphasia. And so you, you, you have to have all four. And so that's really it. It's, everything is a combination. But in reality, we're all testing the same thing, weakness and cortical symptoms. And um, this is kind of a summary, and, and I'll go over this. And so summary of all scales. So this is the entire talk. Look at that. I'm done in two minutes. Isn't that awesome? Uh, every scale is you just add up weakness and, and cortical symptoms and there's, there's some uh, basically cutoff or some ideal sensitivity uh, specificity. Um, and then really the difference is which cortical symptoms do, do you test? Do you only test, you know, do you test vision? and gaze, expressive aphasia, receptive aphasia, do you, do you test neglect or not? And that's the only difference. That's basically all of the scales. And so really how I like to look at it is there's two ways to look at it, right? So um, I said quantitative and qualitative. There's another way to look at it too, is rule out scale and rule in scale, right? And so if you want to rule something in, you want to be more specific. But guess what? There's always a cost. So the rule in scales are the ones we traditionally use in the field, like race, fast, ED, LAM, CSTAT. Save four is basically you have to have all four, like arm weakness, plus gaze, plus aphasia, you know, plus, plus vision loss, right? And so um, basically what, what they do is they're, they're trying to rule in. But the problem with ruling in is you miss a lot of things, right? You miss anywhere from 20 to 65% of LVOs, right? Whereas in rule out scales, basically they perform similar to the anterior scale of six and what the guidelines are. But that problem is they, they still miss because you guys have seen multiple publications. 
uh, anywhere from 10 to 30 percent of NHO scales less than six still have an LVO. Um, and they perform similar to the NHO scale sec six. So uh, PASS, the P P Pomona scale, these are some of these. And so this is basically it. So this is how I like to look at stuff because it's easier if you just look at the brain. And so race, you know, tests um, cortical symptoms and weakness. And what you do is, lots of you guys may already know this, but for the people that aren't exposed to this, I'll quickly go through this, then I'll uh, go quickly past the other ones because there's very similar. So you basically test face, arm, leg, head, um, and gaze deviation, aphasia, and uh, agnosia, depending if, if you're right-sided weakness or left-sided weakness. And based off of the severity, you know, so for arm, um, you know, if, if you have moderate drift versus severe, if it touches the bed, you get zero, one, or two. And then you add them up, and then if you're above five, you know, you, you, you get bypassed, okay? Um, and, um, this is very similar. So the LA motor scale is the only unique one in the fact that the LA motor scale only tests motor symptoms. It actually doesn't test any cortical symptoms. And it's hand grip, you know, um, as well as drift. So zero, one, two for the drift, um, weak grip is one, two, and then face. And so people are, you ask me all the time, so how does LA motor scale get away with not testing any cortical symptoms? The reason why is, um, this uh, chart shows it very well. So most people with severe stroke, severe weakness, have an LVO, but not vice versa. Look at this. 50% of LVOs have NHO scale less than 10, right? And so the question is, are we doing a CTA on every single person in every single primary stroke center? That ain't happening in Phoenix. Our, 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 our rate of getting CTAs on NHO scales greater than 6 when I did the study in 2016 was only 40%. That means 60% of patients, according to guidelines, who should have had a CTA and being screened were not. And so this is what the, uh, you know, so this is how you get away with severity only. Most severe strokes, right, um, have an LVO, but lots of the LVOs actually are NHO scale less than 10, like anywhere from 30 to 50%, okay. Um, Cincinnati P Hospital Social Severity Scale, same thing. You're, you're, you're looking at symptoms and adding them up. Uh, fast ED, very similar to race, but they uh, don't test leg because it's less um, a specific. Uh, sorry, is, uh, is, is less sensitive uh, for for LVO than like face and arm. Arm is actually the most sensitive thing uh, for um, uh, for an LVO, more so than face and leg. Um, and then pass is. Um, one of the newer ones, and you just basically ask them three questions, and you have to have two out of out of the three. Okay, so um, I, someone um, asked me to give a talk like race versus van, and it's really qualitative versus quantitative. That's really what the question is. Again, what is what is your goal? You know, how many comprehensive stroke centers do you have? What are your primary stroke centers doing? Are they screening everyone or not? Because basically, what happens is if if, according to my study in Phoenix in 2016 or 2017, if you use the severity scale and you went to a comprehensive stroke center, you're not going to get a CTA in lots of centers for an hour, two hours, three hours, and lots of these patients go into collateral failure. Um, this is just uh, what we use in Phoenix. Basically, if you have arm weakness, then, then we look for any cortical symptoms, you're positive or negative. In Canada, they use fast van. It's the same thing, but the only difference is they, they don't test vision loss. Um, and um, this was from the, uh, this was published in um, um, Stroke in 2017, but, uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, this is just basically saying what, what an ideal tool is. And there is no ideal tool. <laughs> this, <laughs> this, so, uh, just so you know. So this was uh, the group out of uh, Switzerland. Uh, they're basically saying it's impossible for any uh, uh, scale to, to be perfect. Uh, clinical prediction, uh, mission impossible. Uh, they say race would miss 50% of LVOs. Three atom stroke severity scale would miss 70%. Cincinnati would miss 50. They're basically... Uh, this was a 1,000 patients uh, retrospective using, um, I think, 
they use primarily MRAs, MRIs and MRAs. I know that that group uh, has access to that. But the best thing is basically arm weakness for motor and then um, you know, v gaze, vision, aphasia, and neglect, which makes sense. I mean, this is how it works. And so this is interesting, too, because um, another group looked at it this way. Um, and so, again, it's just the only reason why I show this is because it's showing you if you use severity, you're, you're going to miss LVOs. The, you know, the question is, does it matter or not? And I'll address that in a second. So this is an, um, um, the group out of UMass. They said, well, if you have old leukoareosis or old white matter changes, using fast ED or race, the severity ones works better, right? But here's the thing, though. Look at this. There's tons of LVOs that are missed for the NIH scale less, less than 10, right? And then lo look at this as well. And so, yes, if you're looking at... Uh, you know, spe spe specificity or positive predictive value, the more severities work better. But here's the problem, though. If you look at sensitivity, you know, you're missing 50% if you use race, according to them, according to you, Mass, not me. And then Cincinnati would miss 60. Three atom stroke severity scale would m miss 78. Van w would only miss 30. And you can say Van or any of the qualitative ones, right? And so this. This, this, this becomes the, a problem, right? You, you can't be sensitive and specific. And uh, this is looking at their chart as well. You can see this is, I think the green is in van, fast, ED, race. They have similar areas under the curve, but one is more sensitive, one is more specific, right? And so do you want to over triage people or not? An another thing is what, what's your definition of LVO, right? And so one study included M2s, M3s, ACAs that mimicked MCAs that are getting the supplementary motor area, so A2 clots, right? And another thing is basers and PCAs. And can, can I just get a raise of hands? Who here only takes M1s and, and, and ICAs? Okay. Because it seems like the entire national, international trend is to take M2s, M3s, baselers, PCAs. If, if I have a P1 clot and there's no blood flow to my thalamus, and I'm going to be disabled and lose vision, I would want a, 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 a thrombectomy, you know, unless there's evidence that TPA works for, for P1s just as good. Um, and so th this is where all the studies are different, right? It's like, what is your definition of LVO, right? Right? Is it just M, M, M1 and ICA? That's not what people are doing. Most people are taking M2s, you know, dominant M2s or not. And so as, as prevalence goes up, your, um, the more sensitive tool comes out. And so this is, this is what, what it's all about. Because, you know, if I, you know, I usually do this, I have half the, half the audience stand up. And then depending on which tool you, you use, you know, half the audience would, would, would sit down. And so the point of the matter is, can, can, can I have you two stand up? So if the prevalence was only, if the prevalence was only 10%, right? and we use the tool that 50% sensitive, you, you sit down. We only missed one person. If, if the prevalence is 40% and, you know, and we had, you know, half the people sit down and 40 sit down, that's a huge difference, right? And so really, oh, please have a seat. I mean, which tool you use, you have to know what is the epidemiology of where, you, where you're at. How many comprehensive stroke centers do, do you have? Is, 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 is bypass going to hurt you? Is it going to tax? overtax the system or not. Um, this is another one, retrospective, but it's showing the same thing. This is about 1,000 patients, and they basically show the qualitative uh, is more sensitive, the quantitative is, 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 is more specific, and, and this is basically it. The more qualitative pass and van are more sensitive, 85, 89%. The more specific ones, you know, race, which is the most specific, 89%, but only like 72%, right? And so the point of the matter is you, 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 you can't have it both ways. Most specific race, uh, you know, most, mo most sensitive was pass and van, right? This is our uh, data, which actually shows that. We published this at the International Stroke Conference, which basically showed everything that people are publishing is absolutely correct in the field. Basically, when, when we did VAN, it performed exactly the same as the NHO scale of six, 
which means we, we, we probably over triage patients, right? Positive predictive value, exactly the same. Sensitivity, ne negative predictive value is high. But basically, the tool was made to perform as the NHO scale of six, and it does in, in the field. Other tools are made to perform like NHO scale of 10 or higher, and, and, and they do. So you really have to pick what you want to do, right? There's no wrong, you know? And so then there's this thing, so people tell me, hey, Mo, I, we, we, we get it. The, the, the qualitative ones uh, pick up more. But, but who cares about NHO scale less than 10? They like, probably have good collaterals. The problem is this is the Emory group. Um, they're basically saying this is NHO scale less than five, right? And this is why now we have the endo low study, because yeah, we actually don't know. 40 to 50 percent go in, into collateral failure. So we have to identify these, these patients, whether it's at primary stroke centers or in the field. I don't know. But um, the point of the matter is low NHO skills with ELVOs do go into collateral failure. Um, and this is a problem that I, that I uh, run into. Our primary stroke centers, whether it's not screening, whether it's not getting CTAs, but then even LVOs are missed at uh, primary stroke centers because we don't have neurorads 24-7. This is a case I had, you know, Mo, they, they uh, have forced gaze and all this and they're van positive, but the CTA is, is read as normal. So I put it into my tool, I localize it, I'm like it's superior M2, boom, here it is, right? And so this is happening. Here's another one, low NHO scale. Would, would someone go after this? Would most people go after this or no? And I show a scale of six with neg neglect and arm weakness and a vision cut. Yeah, okay, yes, 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 okay. And so this, this is my point, is nothing is, is perfect. You're, you're either gonna be sensitive or you're going to be spe specific. You cannot have your cake and eat it too, sorry. Um, and so this is the group out of um, uh, Switzerland as well. This is, um, this is what's very interesting is you know how I said we can't just use NHO scale of 10 and, and, and severity scales only? Because this is interesting. Look at between 6 to 24 hours, the LVOs, their average NHO scale is like 4 or 5 or 6. Why? Because the collaterals are so good that they're coming in at 6 hours, at 12 hours. You have to have a way to, to identify these patients. If you use severity only, you're not going to identify this. So ironically, these late window stroke trials maybe should have included low, low, low NIH stroke scales, right? And this is with 2,000 patients. This is this, the same group. And so you, you look, depending on when you present your your severity actually gets less, right? Because your collaterals are so good, you, 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 may, you may come in later. So I thought this was very interesting. This was with 2,000 patients, I, I believe. For posterior circulation, if you add basilars and PCAs, look at this, it doesn't matter when you come in. They usually have a much lower NIH choke scale. Um, so this is basically saying what I said. You, you, you can't be sensitive plus, plus, plus specific. That's basically what this consensus statement from 2018 says. Um, this is an, another one, uh, just saying even the most sensitive tool still misses 30%, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, and this was with what, with 500 or 60 patients, right? And another one with 2,000 and another one with 1,000. So we're up to 3,500 patients. And then here's another one saying that the best, if you want to not over bypass patients, is, is 3 item stroke severity scale. If you don't want to miss anything, you use MAPS or CSTAT. Um, and so this is a summary. Basically, everything tests arm weakness and everything tests cortical symptoms. Uh, basically, qualitative versus quantitative. One last thing. Um, yeah, so this is what I'm talking about. If you bypass according to severity, you know, this is happening where people are not getting CCTAs within one hour. The transfer times are taking two, two to three hours or longer. Sorry, oh, sorry about that. Yeah, and so, um, you know, um, again, I, I don't know what your city does, you know, or, um, you know, how the systems are. Um, and, and this is important, too, because uh, in the field, things change. And so if you look at some of the studies, right, they used a, a database with 100% strokes, but really in the field, it's tumors and everything else. And so proposed solutions, I think mobile stroke units, I think apps, um, some people are, are um, advising using actually 
um, mimics, like asking for mimic questions, you know? And so they're like stroke mimic questions, right? And then for bypass criteria, they have to have severe weakness, they pass the stroke mimic questions, and I have 50 seconds. So what's the goal of bypass? Again, depending on how many comprehensive stroke centers you have and what your resources are. This is just showing that if you go di directly to a center, you actually get, get better outcomes, right? Uh, this was from uh, Denmark, but the problem is 80% uh, of patients were excluded and how many patients were bypassed for no intervention? This is the group from Toledo, which used race. Um, uh, endovascular treatment, only 20% of race positive patients. Again, uh, no under treatment in 80% of race positive patients. So even with the most specific tools, you're, you're still not doing tr treatment on them. And so um, I, I don't think there's a solution. I actually think we need stuff like this. <laughs> That's it, thank you.